SAG strike has come to an end, which is yes. fantastic. Yes. And it's so nice to be able to talk to actors again. Um, I know today's an independent film, so we would have had the opportunity yes. to talk to you anyway. But it's such a significant, important time in the industry. How do you feel? I feel um, endorsed that cinema will live forever. I am very relieved um, that the strike is over. And more than that, that the terms that were met are for real because this strike had to be won and it was won. Um, and on we go, you know, th there is nothing that's really going to shake cinema. I mean, the wonderful thing about cinema is it gets a little rocked mm -hmm. and then it comes up with some new way to bring in an audience. And one of the things that's so thrilling, Max, about being here at the, at the BFI today is there is this massive uh, retrospective of Michael Powell and Emmerich Pressburger at the moment. Mm -hmm. Our film is honored to be being released at the same time as that. And the audiences that are coming to that retrospective are younger and younger and younger. A younger generation is remembering or realizing maybe even for the first time that cinema delivers what not necessarily a screen on the end of your bed can. And that's just the thrill of all. Hey ladies, yeah, how yeah. are you all? Very nice to see you, Max. Lovely to see you too, Tilda. Joanna, how are you? I'm very good, I'm very good. Okay. I'm very excited about tonight. Second time I've watched your film. The first time I've watched it, I felt quite upset. I've got to be honest, it took a few days. This time around, although I was watching on a laptop, which isn't the best way to watch it, go to the cinema. Are we the only people staying here? I don't know. You've sat with this film for a very long time. You were here at London Film Festival, starting with you, Joanna. How has this journey been? Uh, well, it's been a strange journey, actually, because, uh, well, we've had the journey of making the film, which is now a couple of years ago, and then, you know, you start to, you know, try and think about other things, but meanwhile, my mother was, you know, very present in my life and then, and then suddenly wasn't, and, and the film, somehow, the sort of, the memory of the film, because it is a memory now, I haven't watched it for some time, and then my mother, and then missing my mother, and the grief around that. I don't know, it's all, I mean, that's what interests me about cinema, is that it's very much about what you're dealing with in the present time. So it's a whole swirl of, of yeah, mothers and daughters, and real and, yeah. and fiction. I think that's what cinema's supposed to do. I'm supposed to be left feeling a hundred emotions, thoughts, that thought-provoking stuff. But I love that you say you've seen it twice, yes. because I almost feel that every ticket uh, for this film should have a second part to it because as you know, having seen it twice, it's a completely different film when you've seen it the once. Mom? That's strange, because nobody else has mentioned anything at all. You brought her here. Memories flood back in this place, quietly in the evening, through the building and on the grounds. Hello? And I suppose it is a way of staying in touch. I've just spoken to um, a couple of your co-stars. Everyone speaks so fondly of you. I think Carly's been spoiled. How can this oh, be her first I film? Her. I love um, her. Well, we were spoiled with her. That you know, for that to be her first film, for her to just land yeah. uh, in front of us like that, she's a superstar. How did you feel? I mean, you're playing these two characters. Did you have moments at the end of each night, if you remember, where it was like relief, or was it your head just thinking about your own life? I'm always thinking about my own life. I'm, I never really leave it, to be honest. I'm not one of those proper actors who kind of, you know, gets gets possessed or or or, or even, uh, you know, has to shake anything out. I love working, and I love working with Joanna more than most things on the planet. And the way in which we worked on this was such grace. And I, you know, when when it was time to leave the set, I was kind of disappointed, and I would go home and sleep. But I was always thrilled to wake up in the morning. It was, it was so fascinating. It was like a puzzle. It was like constantly trying to do a jigsaw together. That's really what it was. And uh, and and we were so engaged, and we were, you know, Joanna and I have known each other since we were children. We were playing a child's game together with this film. The longer we're here, the more it comes back. The dread. What kind of dread? I just want you to be happy. I'm trying all the time. This place prompted memories. That's what rooms do. They hold these stories. 
I've loved seeing you two travel with this film. Your relationship and friendship, it's infectious. Firstly, it makes me think about how lucky I am to have Sarah, one of my best friends. Um, Joanna, you've grown up with her. You've grown up with each other. Yeah. Um, what, what, <laughs> like, what, how do you help each other having, some, having this creative relationship as well? Well, I mean, it's all just part of the same thing. And as Tilda was saying earlier, we've, Tilda and I have had a conversation about our lives and about cinema from when we were children, literally, because we talked about cinema very early on and we talked about ideas, we talked about our mothers. So it's impossible to un unpack that really as a question because we, and, and we, I feel more and more actually as we get older, there's more to connect. We're here now. And that was then. I'm not sure I feel I have a right to do such a thing. It feels like trespassing. It is incredible for us as women to have badass, strong, powerful, individual women that stand out and are not afraid to stick out like a sore thumb. And I think you two do that beautifully. Um, has that come with time? Or have you two just always been this like, I'm happy in my skin and I'm going to be me? Joanna, do you want to go first and I'll well, come to you? Uh, yeah, interesting to see what Tilda says about that. I No, I haven't always been, uh, you know, that confident. I've had periods of being very unconfident and it goes, it still goes in waves. So I don't think it's a straight line and a sort of, you know, line, something that strengthens. I think it depends what's going on in life. But, but for me, the vulnerabilities are always interesting because I always put actually the most difficult moments into my films. And I think if everything's going all too swimmingly, I don't have anything to hang on to. I'm you sound like when people say musicians have to be broken hearted to make great music. Yeah, no, but I'm, but I'm so superstitious. So I don't like saying that because I'm not willing bad things to happen to me. But I need a bit of tension in life, a little bit of grit that will, that will go into the, the magic of the film. Well, I don't have an alternative. And I think learning that you don't have an alternative is a good thing. I mean, just thinking about your last question, I, for me, it's not about confidence. It's about acknowledging and just sinking into the fact that shyness, vulnerability, and as you put it, sticking out like a sore thumb, which is sore, by the way, it's a sore position, is just the way it is. And just, just stop minding and just be shy and stick out like a sore thumb anyway, even if it actually feels a little sore. Finding other people, finding fellowship, um, and, and seeing in them that, you know, it's not stopping them. That's why I love you two. Absolute pleasure. Thank, Thank you so you much. You. Enjoy the season. Thank you, guys. And that was then. I'm not sure I feel I have a right to do such a thing. It feels like trespassing. Happy birthday, Mum. To us.